Hello again, this is Steve at HVACPartShop.com. You can reach us here at 1-866-215-3831. Today we're going to go over a contactor. This particular one is going to be a part number of a 10F73. This is a single pull contactor. Um, wanted to kind of show it to you in front. You can see that it does have the cover on front to kind of keep uh, debris and stuff out of the, out of the contacts themselves. I did remove the two screws that hold that in so you can kind of see what it looks like underneath. Um, so we removed the, the, the cover. Uh, you can see right here is your contacts on either side. Um, so I'll kind of tell you a little bit how it works. So when your thermostat makes a call for cooling, what it's going to do is it's going to energize your coil. This is your coil down here. When this coil here is energized, it creates a magnetic pole. Uh, it makes a magnetic pole to where it sucks this contact in. So uh, once uh, the 24 is put to it, then this will close, close those contacts, and then power will flow from here to the top and then out to your, uh, to your loads. Your loads would be your compressor and your condenser fan motor. Uh, once uh, once your thermostat is satisfied, it takes the 24 volt power away from here. This would be your control voltage away from here. And on this side too is your other side of the coil. Um, once it does that, then it will de-energize and then this will pop back up and open the circuit. Um, just wanted to kind of go over that with you. As far as your terminals, uh, this would be your Yep, let's turn it around just a little bit. This would be your L1, and this is L2. L1 just stands for line 1. So 120 coming in here, and then once, it, once the switch closes, then we got our 120 that passes up to here. Um, this one right here is going to have another 120. Most of your ACs are going to be a two, 230 volt, 240 volt AC. Uh, then... Um, this one right here, so this would be line two. It's already going to be powered up to here since this is a single pull contactor. What they mean by poles is how many contacts it's got. This has just got one set of contacts in it. So again, uh, later on in the video, we will go uh, and we will go outside and I'll show you installation of this contactor. Um, I uh, I think that's it on this. Uh, let's go outside and get started on the contactor. Hello, this is Steve again at HVACPartShop.com. Today we're going to go over changing out a contactor. Uh, this particular contactor we're going to change out. Uh, the issue we had with it is the points are pitted on it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get that changed out. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing that we want to do is make sure that we, we went ahead and got our disconnect shut off. But we want to make sure that we don't have power. So you definitely want, before you start touching stuff in here, uh, use your meter to make sure everything's off so and I'm at zero so I know that we're good to go alrighty let's get this out of the way a little bit okay first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and get this one removed just a couple screws on either side we'll go ahead and get that one removed we got one down here And as you notice, this is, somebody took the cover off of this. It's supposed to have a cover on it to keep bugs and dirt and stuff like that out of it. That way when this is uh, engaged, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't pull in a, uh, and trap a lot of that, that stuff inside the contacts. So, let's go ahead and put those there. Okay, so we got our contactor here. We got it out of the way. Let's go ahead and get our new contactor. We'll go ahead and mount it and then we'll just switch wires. Here's the cover I was talking about on the old one, this cover here. Basically what it does is it kind of seals our contacts to keep any dirt and debris out. Uh, the reason you want to do that is because when that uh, contactor closes, 
we want it to be a nice, clean surface that it's closing against. Otherwise, whatever's in there, it'll create arcs, and when you do create an arc, that's what happens when, uh, when it starts to pit on you and stuff because of that spark. So we're going to go ahead and get this one uh, installed. So let's go ahead and get that going. I'll just kind of push this one out of the way for right now. Okay, so we're nice and tight, so we're just going to go ahead and start switching our wires here. Um, so basically, and I'll kind of go over this in another video, but uh, the way this contactor works is that when we have a call for, when we have a call for cooling, uh, we've got a coil, and I'll show you on this one, we've got a coil on the back side of the contactor, this contactor here. This is a 24 volt wire. And then on the other side, we got another 24 volt wire. When we have 24 volts that energizes this coil, what happens is it creates a magnetic pull. And then when that does that, it pulls this contactor in as such to, to make contact. Uh, so that's what we got. So we'll go ahead and start switching out our wires, just wire for wire. take very long to do this. Definitely want to make sure our fittings are nice and tight. Uh, don't want any loose electrical connections. Uh, that can cause trouble. Uh, you'll have heat. It'll gain a lot of heat if it's not a good tight connection. And then finally, we'll just go ahead and we'll move our, uh, our power wires. So our power comes up through the top. Uh, once, it's, once the switch is energized uh, or has 24 volts put to it, it closes and then this is for your load. So your load for your transfer, or your load for your condenser fan motor, and your load for uh, your compressor. So that's how that'll work. I'll go ahead and get these trans transferred over, and then we'll go from there.
Okay, so all we have left on this contactor would be our 24 volt wires. I was talking to you earlier about that, our coil here. So basically when your thermostat makes a call for uh, a demand, or your thermostat has a demand for, for cooling, um, the contacts in the thermostat will close. It will send 24 volts, 24 volts out to this coil. Uh, that's when the coil decides to go ahead and uh, close this contactor. You can see right here how that's closing. The problem with this contactor is, is right in here is your points. I know it's hard to see, but right in there is your points. And what happens is, is when you get debris and stuff in there, it uh, uh, it won't close tightly, so it'll start to arc a little bit. Once that happens, then your contactor will start to pit, and uh, and then it's time to go ahead and replace that contactor when that happens. So let's go ahead and replace these other two wires. Make sure you don't pull on the wire itself when you're pulling those out. You want to try to uh, pull by the connector itself. So sometimes you just got to kind of wiggle it a little bit um, to get it in there. We'll go ahead and swap that one out there. We'll do the same on this side over here. Go ahead and get that out. So we got that. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so that's how we do the contactor. If you have any questions, you can always give us a call. We're at uh, HVACpartshop.com. My phone number here is going to be 1-866-215-3831. Uh, until then, I'll see you the next time.